Hi guys, welcome back, I am Red Zed, and today we are here with another Save My Campaign video, and we are playing as Epirus against the Spartans. Now, this one was sent in by Nyrock, so thank you very much to them for sending this in, and uh, we are going to be trying to save this Epirus campaign. Now, the main issue, of course, is the Spartans sieging down our most... Um, you know, our biggest army. We don't have an army outside of this army. So we need to win this battle. But from my testing, guys, the Spartans have ran away each and every time. So in order to uh, to play it out, we shall see what happens. But first of all, let's talk about a few things that we could potentially be doing a little bit better um, from the start. We are 30 turns in, guys. 30 turns, yes. A whole 30 turns. Um, and we have taken... One, two, three, four, five-ish settlements. I can't... No, that's... Well, that wasn't taken early. I believe you start with those four as Epirus in version 0.5. I've been playing a lot of the beta. Spoilers, guys. <laughs> I've been playing a lot of the beta. But, yeah, I believe those four you start with. So, we've taken about five in 30 turns. So, that's one every six turns. So, that would lead me to believe that we are sieging them down rather than assaulting them and taking them a bit quicker. So that's the first thing I would say, is take the settlements a bit quicker in general. And the second thing is we have probably gone the wrong way. We have fought the Aetolian League rather than going after the Antigonids. Now, the Antigonids early on, guys, are very, very weak. They look strong, but they are so spread out. They've got uh, places everywhere. And the AI kind of gets a bit confused and will defend various areas, but it can't defend everywhere. And it doesn't start off with enough troops anyway to defend everywhere. So, what you should do if you're playing as Epirus early on, I would highly, highly recommend that you go and attack the Antigonids first, rather than the Aetolians, the Boeotians, and even coming onto the Peloponnese. Definitely not. Go for the Antigonids first. But, we have taken the decision in this save to come south rather than go east so that's how we're going to try and save it in terms of the economy it's actually pretty decent um every everywhere is min maxed in terms of the economy i've not noticed anything out of place with it i think it's going okay obviously this one's been taken recently because it's still got damage um but we got the oracle of delphi here as well which is pretty nice uh, but that one can actually get up to very high uh, same over here. We can probably get a little bit higher. So we're actually back into the positive already. Just a bit of extra min-maxing. I believe the rest of these are all... Okay, fine. These ones, we can't put them down or up. Yeah, that's about it. And of course, these three settlements over here don't have garrisons. And I think that's okay right now. Uh, unless you're slightly worried about the Antigonids coming across. But we aren't actually... Oh, we are at war with the Antigonids as well. So that's a slight worry. Do we have any extra garrisons in any of these places? I don't believe we do. It looks mainly like generals that we've got uh, dotted around, which is good. Governors. Uh, the Deuteroi, definitely not the ideal one to garrison with. I'd be garrisoning with a lot smaller and cheaper units. Because these guys, as you can see, 918 gold a turn it takes for those boys. But that is the uh, the first few tips, guys. So let's press the end turn. Let's see what Sparta does this time. Like I say in the testing, it does very much seem like they've run away. Um, and honestly, I might even be willing to abandon this to go after some, some better targets, some weaker targets. Because as you can see, Sparta isn't exactly weak. They're re relatively strong at this point. They've got a few settlements. And they've got that monstrous army. Now... If I destroy this army, this is the problem that we have here. If I destroy this army, is Sparta going to have enough to defeat my army on the second go? And I believe it will do. So that to me tells me that they're quite a, they're a stronger target than we should really be going for right now. I would say the Achaeans is probably the best one that we can go for. We are also at war with the Antigonids. If we can clean up this little area very quickly, then we will be in a good situation. The other thing we could do, potentially is just simply abandon uh, ourselves over here. Abandon. We are allied with the Boeotians, which is fine, but they probably will stab us in the back at some point. But we could abandon our thoughts of the Peloponnese and just leave this settlement to get siege down and then go north to Lamia 
to um, Farsalos and Larissa. And Larissa's actually the capital of the Antigonids right now. So, <laughs> I'm assuming they've lost... Uh, well, they must have lost Pella or Thessalonica. I'm not exactly sure. But I think the Antigonids are the better option. Because the rest of their troops, they're kind of split off down here. Let's leave Sparta. I don't care about Sparta anymore. Let's leave behind literally nothing. Like 32 Greek slingers. We can come across there. Of course, the enemy can come across there as well. Oh, well that was the wrong thing to do, wasn't it? So let's get there. Let's see what we can do with these 32 Greek slingers. They're still happy in Aegeon. Now let's uh, get completely rid of this. We haven't invested any money into it because you can see all these are the wrong culture. They are Greek, whereas I'm assuming we're West, uh, Western Hellenic. Yep. So, yeah. So let's get rid of everything we can here. This will help our money situation quite significantly. Um, get rid of everything. And then if the enemy does take it back, what do they have to take? They have nothing. They have literally nothing. I, I'm i not going to delete the port because it will make good money for us for a couple of turns. We can't delete the farms or the roads. And the Temple of Hermes, that extra trade income bonus, will keep that. And then instantly we've got 4,000 gold now, guys, as well. And we can risk putting it on normal because, as I say, it doesn't really matter if it rebels. So let's go after Lamia instead. And uh, we've got a guy coming of age, Pyrrhus of Epirus. Um, so we've got an extra general. Uh, I think best thing we can really do with him is actually send him up here. Because, as you can see, this region actually does border the Antigonids. And if they just come, they can just take the city straight away without us putting up any resistance whatsoever. We've got a few elite tax buildings in here as well. I believe they've probably been built in early on. So that's some extra income that we're getting in there as well. But there's a few nice little settlements that we do have. In terms of our recruitment hub, of course, um, our capital, Ambrakia, is the best one that we have options for right now. And at the minute, I'm happy with this army. I don't really... Let's swap with that diplomat. I don't really think we need too many replacements. But what we could do is we could actually uh, get some slingers. So let's go a couple of slingers. And they can act... act as uh, garrisons while we get rid of the deuteroi out of these settlements and use them in our war because they're going to be so useful going forward. We can even do the same thing here with the Akontistai. We could have swapped it out with that. That's probably what I should have done. But, you know, we all make mistakes, guys, don't we? We all make mistakes. Uh, but, yeah, I probably should have done that. But these settlements are going to be easy to take. You can see um, the Antigonids are, are focusing over here. Doesn't look like they've got any too many armies around here. They might have a big full stack. But, yeah, I'm going to bet for ourselves. Because we've got some Theroperoid. We've got four generals, which should be very nice indeed. Now, yeah, we are a general's bodyguard in terms of uh, cavalry as well. So that's very, very nice. Um, because that's going to be extremely strong. Uh, so I'm not too worried about a battle. It might reduce our, our deficit quite a bit. Now, with the rest of our money, let's build. And let's see what we can uh, afford to build that's going to be best. Oh, and Brachia doesn't even have a port. I'm assuming that's going to... It says 112. Now, 112, remember, guys. It doesn't seem like a lot. But over time, this is going to get more and more and more as it trades more and more and more. And uh, I believe there's going to be an added extra couple of trade routes in there. So it probably will be, you know, about 200 or so going forward. And then Fenike, uh Let's see. What's our most our richest settlement? They're all about 1,000. Oinia Dai has about 1,400. So that's actually quite good. What's this? So no, Pactos is actually building that. I'm not going to cancel it now because it's only got one turn left. But, yeah, that's not really that useful because Ambrakia is only here. Like, it's not far to walk between the two. So that's probably not the greatest option. I would also recommend getting that repaired ASAP because if they want, the Spartans could just come and take that in one turn. 
uh, because the walls are actually damaged. When the walls are damaged on here, guys, they will be open for the enemy to come and take. Now, do we have anywhere else we can build a small farm? That's actually ready to upgrade. Uh, Delphoi is actually needs re repairing, so we'll repair that wall. So not really that impactful stuff we could have done on that turn, apart from building that port in Embrakia. So, yeah, that's fine. Let's press the end turn. Let's see where we get up to. And hopefully, you know, after a few quick conquests, we'll be back in the game. And I'm hoping that the Boeotians have enough enemies to, uh, you know, to fight before turning their backs on us. Because we really need a big war against the Antigonids here to really get rich. I'm hoping we can take Thessaly and then the Antigonids will be kind of done. So that would be quite a nice little, uh, little conquest. So let's get all our ladders. This is all cavalry in here, which is obviously never good for defending a siege. Probably be able to do that just with our with our generals once we've got the walls, so that'll be good. Now, we've got no Pactos there. As I say, you know, we're not making a lot of money, so that's fine, but we have managed to repair the walls, so they can't just come and take this straight away. They've come and sieged down Aegeon, but as I say, when <laughs> what are they going to take? It's literally got nothing. It's absolutely fine. Do they have they don't even have any siege equipment yet so that's fine as well so let's end the turn guys well we've got that guy moving as well so now we do actually have a garrison in there uh, i'm happy with the other two that don't have a garrison because they're currently not really bordering any other nation so it's very unlikely that a rebel is going to come and take that uh, very very unlikely so that's fine not to have any garrisons in those those cities but if we can start building ports up we are going to be able to become really rich because you can see all these settlements will have sea trade routes with each other. So we need to start getting some ports as quick as possible. We've got a guy, he's 27. Let's 100% take him. He's gone into Ambarakia. So let's go. We want a rich place for you to govern. I mean, Oina die, but that's actually governed by someone else. So let's get you maybe up to Fenike. And yeah, we can actually move this Deuteroy over there. It doesn't look like they want to go through the middle of there. I don't know why. Where else did we have Deuteroy? We had it in Naupactos. So let's get you to Naupactos. This settlement is quite annoying right now, but like I say, rebel settlements, guys, not really too much to worry about. Where else was the Deuteroy? I'm sure... Uh, I probably messed up slightly there. But well, was it only there and uh, I'm so confused. Where is the other Deuteroy? Well, anyway, it doesn't matter. We can send the other guy forward for retraining. We've got another coming of age. He's in Embrakia. We're just going to have to put the that down slightly. That's fine. And we've built the port in Embrakia now. And instantly 1,600. So how much did that trade go up? Well, probably about 122. But that will build up over time and become stronger and stronger and stronger. So that's really good. In terms of this, do we risk doing the auto-resolve? I think we do. Oh, 400. Never auto-resolve, guys. But that should help our, our, our finances quite a bit, actually, with that. Let's also auto-sort all these guys because they're in a really weird order. Um, and let's leave 21 singular Acontisti behind. Only 64%. We can't actually do much here. Let's leave the other Akontisti behind then. And if I take the 21 out... Are you still happy? Yes, they are. Fantastic. So, let's go straight up to Pharsalos. Bang. Straight in there. And we're just going to go and, and blitz the Antigonids as quick as we can. Doesn't look like they've got much in their capital either. I mean, that's not really helped us for money too much, but it's fine. It's not a great settlement. Uh, this one's actually a bit better. And then this one, Larissa, should be really good in terms of what it's got in there. Uh, but yeah, moving around. You guys have moved, haven't you? Fantastic. Let's get you up there. And like I say, I'm not bothered about Aegeon at all. At all. Leave them to try and take that. If we have to retreat from here and come and defend now Pactos. That's fine. I'm not bothered about that. But we're just trying to get some really weak settlements very quickly. Um, not even taking the battles there, like I say. That quick. Uh, I should have probably taken the battle. Uh, 
don't ever auto resolve, guys. That's another tip. Not sticking to my own tips, am I? But anyway. Uh, but yeah, here we go. We've got the Achaean League. Um, and I will just... I will fight this as much as I... Nah, let's not. I, I can't really fight that in good conscience after I didn't fight the other fight up there. Um, so yeah, let's leave them to take that. They've pretty much taken a settlement that is pointless. And hopefully that'll bring Sparta into this war as well. That'll They'll fight the Achaean League. and Because they're now bordering each other. And that should hopefully be a nice little extra boon for us. While they're scrabbling, we can fight the Antigonids and take them out. Do we go for the auto-resolve again? Probably not this time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fight it off-camera, guys, because it's a tiny little battle. So, yeah, don't worry about that. In terms of the tactics, very simple. Get your missile troops up on the walls. They probably won't be defending it because they've only got one. Take all the towers. Let the towers and the missile troops do their worst to whatever they've got to offer. Then I'm probably just going to use my uh, generals to do the rest of the damage because it's cavalry versus cavalry we should win that pretty handily so i will see you after the battle guys here we are guys we have won that battle we did lose a few men but mainly it was general's bodyguards as you can see and sort of the peltas which really don't matter at this point so yeah fine little victory there very good indeed we're taking general's bodyguards losses of course guys because they replenish automatically we don't need to go to a city and retrain them they can replenish automatically so by taking the losses you do risk losing a general by doing that of course but in this case i thought it was worth it taking that risk uh, and taking the casualties there ready uh, so that they can replenish very easily right i'll see you back on the campaign map here we are. Farsalos is now ours. Let's enslave. No exterminations, remember. That's definitely not what we want to do. We can delete this for some extra cash as well. 1,600. Very nice. Not a terrible city, but making 1,000, it's always good to just keep building it up one after the other. In terms of who we're going to leave behind, probably the Uzonoi. I know they've got more men. Oh, actually, the mercenary Greek um, Peltas because they've got less less men and let's go straight for larissa bang straight onto the capital of the antigonids and we're you know blasting through them as quick as we can what i might in fact do is send off what i should have done is actually send off a detachment to go attack them there we've got a lot of alerts from that rioting in thermont well we'll just put that down Aegeon's occupied of course uh pyrrhus of epirus has got a um, a uh, priest of zeus which is nice uh, you guy, uh, my friend Cleides, go into Phoenike. Uh, you guys, where did we have the Deuteroi? It was there, wasn't it? So one of you, I want you to go into there. And then we'll send the Deuteroi uh, up there. As the Deuteroi go, guys, they are a okay. I mean, Phalangite units are decent in general. Um, but yeah. They're not an amazing phalangite unit. They're not they're not terrible, but they're not amazing. So they're going to do okay. Just remember that. Just remember that they're not, you know, going to be an absolutely beastly phalangite unit like an Agima or like um, the Spartan second level of phalangite after the reforms. So just remember that, you know, it's always going to be a bit of a struggle with the Deuteroi going later into the game. But if you can get a decent amount of experience, then that's good. We did kind of ignore our diplomat over here. We've got trade rights with these boys. If we can get an alliance, they don't have a good relation with us. I'm wondering, do we go and try and ally? So we are allied with the Boeotians. At war with them. At war with the Achaeans. At war with the Spartans. I wonder whether we go and try and ally some of these Thracian boys, uh, like the Adrissians, for example, and uh, because they should be fighting the Antigonids as well. And you can see Antigonids have a lot of settlements, but we're back to 1,300, which is pretty nice in terms of our income. Very nice indeed. And you can see just by changing the direction in which we are traveling, we're instantly making a lot more gains than trying to wade through the absolute... A quagmire of troops on here we're at war with every nation here so essentially you know we're fighting three ais whereas if we go this way we're only fighting one which is pretty nice a lot better 
than any other thing. Uh, so we've got a bit of money now. Let's see what we can build. I kind of want to build in the capital as much as possible because no corruption there, of course. Let's build the uh, the farms. Then let's have a look at what else. We've got Oda Dai over here that's making a lot of money. And I think it'll make a lot more if we could get that port. So let's wait until we can afford that port. In fact, next turn we'll build that rather than building something right now. Uh, and we can upgrade one settlement. We've got to remember that before it starts rioting um, because of the squalor. Because it's not got the governor's building up to the right level. But that's fine. Yeah, here comes the Achaean League. That's fine. I'm not too bothered by that. Like I say, the, the AI is very slow generally at taking settlements. Um, so what we might do is just gather a few, a few troops from around the region and just basically say to them, come and have a go if you think you're hard enough, mate. That is literally what we're going to do. We're going to stick. So the Deuteroy that was going to reinforce the army can now come back here. So what is in that army? Two generals and two infantry units. Honestly, if we can get the Deuteroy inside the city, I don't think that would be too much of a worry. I'm also kind of willing to move you from Thermon, although that's not great. But let's repair that. That should help. And if we can swap around a governor, maybe, that would be good. So maybe you, if we just go down. Although that is a very, uh, very risky settlement to leave a garrison from. So we might just leave you in Thermon there for the time being. Um, and that's fine. That's fine. Let's go after Larissa then. Oh, they've got a couple of the, uh, the Phoebes here, which is a cool unit. Let's just uh, have a look at those boys so you can see them. Very nice unit. It's a, kind of a spearman archer hybrid unit. And the Ephibes are the young uh, the young people from the uh, from yeah, the young men in Macedon. So they had to do several years of preparation before being able to join the adult community and enter the military. Uh, which is cool. And then they do, f uh, when they turn 15 years old, they're registered as eligible for a Phoebic service. So, yeah, then they do the training and become these guys, the, uh, the, the sort of archer spearmen, which are actually a very good unit. Look at that. 15 missile attack. So, uh, if we can get them, if they're on the walls, that's going to be a bit of a problem. But if they're not, we should be fine. Uh, but yeah, in terms of this battle, I've got no worries about this battle if uh, we can get the Deuteroy inside the city quick enough, which they are very slow. And they will be tired, but that's fine. So, uh, I'm probably going to do this battle all by myself again, guys. So, uh, um, I will see you at the end of it because it's, you know, it's going to be a spread it pretty much exactly the same tactics as last time. And the same tactics which you've seen me on my other um, Save My Campaigns, like Athens... Um, it's mainly Athens, hasn't it been so far? Um, so, yeah. Check that out, guys. Check those out down in the description below. Anyway, I will see you back on the campaign map. So, here you go, guys. Not quite as successful as last time. That 190, unfortunately, came at the cost of two of our generals, which is pretty, pretty annoying. But that is, like I said, the risk that we take doing this, uh, doing this sta uh, tactic. But uh, remember to rally your main general all the time so he doesn't actually get killed like our faction leader. But you can see it was worth it because we pretty much did everything with the general. Lost a couple of units of the Greek hoplites and the mercenary hoplites. But that's it. Not really too much of a problem. So I will see you back on the campaign map. Here we are. And Larissa is a fantastic settlement to take. Already making 1,000. Like I say, not a huge amount of money. But look at all these buildings we've got in here. Very nice indeed. Um, in terms of the military buildings, like I say, this area, this Lamia doesn't actually have any apart from a stable. So let's get rid of that. Let's repair this as well while we can. Uh, over here in Parcelos, again, stables. We don't need it. We've done this many times before. You've seen it before. Um, have we got military buildings in a few of these? We do actually over here. But Thermon's quite a good one. I don't want to delete those for no reason. Um, over in this area again for Nikkei doesn't need that let's uh, build up this money same with uh, this place over here Korkira definitely don't need that because we're never going to recruit on an island like that's just pointless uh, unless you're playing as Rhodes or something like that Delphoi for now let's leave them there 
uh, just in case. So we've got some options for recruitment going forward. Uh, but Larissa, taken by us now, which is really nice. There is a fact. There is a uh, a guy in there. I do really want a spy. Do we have any spies? Marcias, he's over here. Well, let's let's come in. Uh, let's go to here. And we can see this is actually rebelling. That's great. And then we can actually see Faloria over there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a risky decision, guys. I'm going to take a risky old decision. I'm going to get you and maybe an extra Prodromoy. Uh, we're going to go for Demetrias. We're going to do the divide and conquer technique. And we'll send these boys up here to... Valorea. Divide and conquer, like I say. That's very, very quick way to take two settlements at once. This one has some Ephebes and some Acontisti, so our cavalry should get rid of that. This one just simply has a general. But Larissa taken now. Very nice to see. Nice and rich settlement. Going to provide us a lot of income going forward with all these roads going to different areas. It's going to be trading a lot. Uh, and we're instantly up to 3,000 gold, guys. And you can see the Antigonids, they just don't really have very much, do they? So let's uh, let's maybe move to here, and then we'll move across this way to Pella. And we can see where we're going to go next. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's keep going towards the Adrissians. We can actually scout out a little bit with that. Looks like they've got a bit of an army there, but it's only three units. Nothing to worry too much about. And at this point... I'm not going to recruit any more troops just yet. We're going to consolidate the army slightly, especially after this defense. Um, and then we'll look at uh, deploying some more troops. So let's see, is there anywhere else we can build a port? Because the more ports we have, the richer and richer we're going to get over time. I know, and also roads as well. We need to get roads in to these different places so that they can trade with other, other areas. So let's get a road there. And Kokira, anywhere else that doesn't have roads would be nice to build a road. Um, not too bothered about re repairing those those just yet. No, it doesn't look like there's anywhere else. Uh, well, we will save the money then for another port. In fact, no, let's screw the roads in here and uh, build a port instead. So we're just building ports and then we'll build a couple of roads next turn. Uh, so it's mainly these two regions here that need roads. Uh, anywhere else? No, everywhere else looks okay for roads. So it's just these two regions. Then it can connect into Ambrakia and make both of these regions and all of the all three of these regions richer. And then once we've taken this, then it will be able to trade that way as well. So you just want to kind of build that momentum, guys, and keep going forward with everything you're doing. So uh, that's the way we want to do it. Again, the heroic death of Permion and Boris. But anyway, it doesn't matter. And if we do get attacked by an Antigonid army here, guys, we can do the long retreat. Always remember, you can do a long retreat. If you actually enter... Okay, Sparta. Cease fire. I'm 100% ready to take that. They've got no other enemies, so that might force them into war with the Kia. So let's go with the oh, cease fire. Let's then see if we can go for the trade routes. Alliance, maybe? No, they won't accept that. But map information for a bit of cash... We'll go for 800, see whether they accept that. Would you consider 510, better friends. than nothing. Again, the AI AI knows the map, guys. <laughs> so by giving them map information, it basically... So when they, they don't have map information, they pretend not to know the map, but they do. And they're not very good at pretending. So they pretty much move in very similar fashion to the way they would move anyway. Um, so, <laughs> so by selling the map information, it's really, really not much of an, uh, an issue. Let's have a look at Pella. It's not even the, uh, the capital, uh, yet. <laughs> Again. And then we've got, uh, Thessalonica over here. Is that now the capital? No, I wonder where they've moved their capital to then. I'm surprised they still have, they still have Thessalonica. So why did they move? I'm sure Larissa isn't the capital at the start, but I could be wrong. Right, let's see what the... So the kill 102, that's fine. Again, we're playing on the very high... Oh, I forgot to say the difficulty, guys, as well. What difficulty that we're playing on? Um, medium campaign and hard battle. That is what we're playing on uh, right now. That was what the uh, what the save was sent in as. So Fenike's upgraded, and so has Korkira over here. That's fine. 
Uh, we will do that very soon. But as you can see, again, we've taken Demetrias. Nice settlement to take. Let's get rid of all the military buildings again. If the blacksmith provided income, we 100% would keep it. But for now, yeah, it reduces our tax income here. So let's get rid of that. Now we've got to make a decision. I think we'll get rid of the mercenary hoplites in terms of this army. Can we go up to high? Mm, I'm not going to risk it for this one. And then we're going to come all the way across. So we can split the armies very effectively. And yeah, we're pretty nice right now. 5,000 a turn. And let's go for Faleria. And let's actually siege it down properly. I'll actually show you this battle, guys. Finally. Finally, I will show you a battle. So, let's get in there. I will see you on the battlefield. And look, this is a fine day for battle. Every day is a fine day for battle when your heart is... Here we are, guys. And, uh, yeah, nice little settlement we've got going on here. A bit of an issue with the... Uh, the ladders here, because they're not going to sit in there. So we might have to do a couple of weird ladder maneuvers. Uh, I mean, looks like we're going to have to come right close to the gate. I never like to go by the gate, because it's got two really close together. So potentially if we go here instead, that might be the option. Um, and we'll uh, send these boys up. Go uh, in there get uh, on there and it doesn't look like they've put anyone on the wall so again it's going to be a cavalry uh cavalry charges to them and we don't have any missile troops to stick on the walls unfortunately right now we do have missile cav though so we will use them to the best of our ability um, i don't know what they are doing but it's not fantastic uh, <laughs> but yeah when you've got such big units going onto the walls as well guys it's a bit janky sometimes but that's why i always play on large and not ultra or whatever I play on. I, I'm pretty sure it's large. Half of this size anyway. Basically. So, yeah. Nice. And, uh... Yeah, getting on the walls now. Good. And once we're on the walls, they should want to come forward. The Aphibis and the Akontistai. Because the AI loves to do that. Try and challenge you, but they're not really doing anything else. So, uh... Yeah, let's get up. You guys are up as well. Just slip through there just for now. Then let's come this way. And then you guys, we're going to get you whoop, all the way <laughs> all the way around to there. So you take all those uh, towers. And it looks like they are kind of just staying still. So let's get our cavalry in. And then let's get our other cavalry in. <laughs> and yeah, it's just going to be a grind fest on the town center, I believe. But anyway, that's fine. Not too worried about that. They aren't coming forward. Oh, we've got the uh, the unit all the way over. Oh, no, 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 no. This way, please. This way. And it looks like they are coming forward. Good. Good, good, good. If they do that, that's fantastic. We want them off the town square, remember, guys. Always want them off the town square. So that they can actually route. Because when they go onto the town square, they can't actually route. So, let's go for it. Let's go. It's only an Akontistai unit. If we need to charge them, we will do. We'll get these guys down as well. We'll also get these guys down, ready to fight. Back to go there. Fortunately, we might take a bit of damage. I guess charge then. <laughs> and uh, we will rally. We don't want. We don't really want to lose any more guys in this. They should still be firing, even though they were kind of in the fight. Now we've sandwiched them. Which is very nice indeed. And the Akontistai should really get shredded by our men. Even though we're on hard difficulty. The Phoebes, maybe less so. Where are these boys? If we can get them in against the Phoebes, that'd be great. These guys already shaken. Because the Phoebes are spearmen still, remember guys. So let's speed that up. Come on, run men, run. But our generals seem to be doing quite a decent job. Hopefully not dying. <laughs> We shall see. And just smashing through those guys. And again, I'm not really bothered about the Prodromoi and the Mercenary Theroporoi Cavalry. In fact, the Mercenary Theroporoi Cavalry, it'll be, it'll be better if they uh, die a little bit more. So let's uh, clean those boys up. Then let's charge the Aphibis in the back. 
And that should break them. There we are. Fantastic. So we lost a few men, mainly the cavalry. But again, I'm not bothered about that cavalry too much because I don't really like using it. If you guys like using it, then maybe you wouldn't do that. I'd probably use the hoplites instead there and then charge with the general in the back. But again, I'm not bothered about that cavalry at all, really. So I'll see you back on the campaign map, guys. So here we are, guys. I have enslaved it. And yeah, again, let's get rid of the recruitment and the recruitment buildings. Again, we don't need them. They were, they are good for law, so do be wary of this. We might be getting a little bit of corruption, but there's not much corruption here anyway because it's so close to our capital, which is only there, um, only there uh, in general. Let's get our spy up here. We can see again Antigonids. The Antigonids guys are so weak early on. If you are playing anywhere near them, just go and take them out. If you're playing on the Peloponnese, probably not something you're going to be able to do. But if you're playing Boeotians, Aetolians, fight everyone around you. But then go after the Antigonids because they are so weak early on. They're a paper tiger. They really don't have much. And they have so many fronts to defend. They've got you. They've got the RDAI over there. They've got all the Thracian factions in the north ready to come and attack them. Then they've got spread out bits over here where they'll fight Athens, Boeotians, Spartans, Achaeans. So they are really, really spread very thinly at the start of the campaign, guys. So don't be worried about going and taking them on. So let's move on to the next city. And we'll go straight up to Argos Orestion. Uh, we could actually siege it down properly with these boys. So let's do that. Let's make sure we're, you know, sieging down. So we can actually siege it down next turn. Always want to keep... When you're doing a blitz attack like this, guys, you want to be taking settlements every single turn. Every single turn. And that'll just weaken them so much. So I think we can pretty uh, pretty nicely say that we've saved this campaign right now. We've taken an extra four, five settlements from what we started on. We have a lost Aegeon, though, as well. So four net in about six turns. So pretty fast, uh, fast speed for our attacks we are under siege at now packed us of course but like i say if we can get the deuteroy in there we'll be very very nice indeed so let's talk about our next steps guys and if you do want to send in one of these the discord links will be down below you can either send it into the discord for rtr imperium Serectum, or you can send it directly into my discord uh, and let me know what you want help with with your campaign so definitely do that if you've got any old saves that you abandoned or, or any campaigns you're currently working on that you're struggling with at the minute. So, you know, we went from minus 400 gold to now 7,000 a turn with 11,000 in the bank. We've got these guys there. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and fill out our areas with some ports if we can. Could go for the governor's palaces. I think that's probably worth it just for the long run. Uh, now, Pactos, we don't want to do that. So let's upgrade the ones that need upgrading, and then we'll do what we want with the rest of the money. There was a couple, wasn't there? Which one? Okay, we'll repair those at Demetrias as well. <laughs> I think it's one that's already building. Yeah, it's uh, this one, which we can upgrade next turn. So here, owner die. Definitely want to build that port because it's a very rich settlement already. Uh, in terms of other ports... Probably like Lamia over here. Could get some ports on this side and that allow us to trade with the Boeotians and anyone in the north that we get allied with, like the Adrissians. So that's always a good option. And then for the rest of the money, I think we might be able to save it, which is uh, good, which is fantastic. Uh, in fact, we should use it to recruit another unit. Maybe a Greek slinger, just a garrison. A couple more Greek slingers just to garrison these settlements and relieve them of their actual useful units in here, like the Peltasts and the Uzonoi. Um, so, yeah, although to me they're not that useful anyway. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, really good. In terms of the next steps, guys, what are you going to do going forward? At this point, the world is your oyster. I would keep pushing back on the Antigonids as much as possible. Even if the Achaeans take now Pactos, they're going to be really slow at taking Thermon and Onidai over here, or even uh, Delphoi. So I would say at this point, you want to just focus fully on the Antigonids and just take them out, because it's rich land again, guys. It's really rich land 
over here. You can see 2,900 for Cyrus, which is crazy. That is really, really good income for simply a large town. So you're going to get very rich taking all this land. So take all this land, and then the Peloponnese will be yours to take. I'd probably take out the Boeotians and Athens along the way, so that you become the hegemon on Greece, uh, and then look at taking the Peloponnese. In terms of buildings, of course, try and get those ports up, those roads when you can. Uh, get that trade income flowing early, early on. That'd be fantastic. And at this point, now we're making so much money, it's not averse to start reinforcing our big army over here, because it is quite damaged now. So I will probably use this army as much as possible. But when we come up against the big Antigonid army, it's time to retreat. Get retrained and get a few extra units. Now remember guys, the AI is very slow at taking cities. They take it at a cumbersome pace. So make sure that you're not really scared. If they come and say we take this and then, you know, we march and we see a, a big full stack. Let's retreat back to Ambrakia, get retrained and not really worry about this settlement at all. Uh, because it'll take them ages to take it. And even if they do take it, you can just come back retake it again and get uh, blitzing the Antigonids once again. So I think, you know, we're in a pretty good situation now. Very nice indeed. Done a lot, uh, a lot of campaigning. And we're up to 7,000 a turn, which pretty much is very good. We've taken all of Thessaly. Uh, we've still got Epirus over here. Uh, we've taken the Aetolian areas as well. So I think we're in a really decent situation now, guys. A really decent situation. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. Please do like. Please do subscribe. It really does help the channel out, guys. And I will see you all again on the next video.